Okay, we're going to talk about some of the most common offences that people are sometimes arrested for at a protest. So this isn't a comprehensive list, but it's a good starting point of the things that are most commonly used by the police to arrest protesters. The first one that we're going to take a look at, oh, sorry, you can, um, there's a link on the screen. You can take a look at more frequently used laws if you want to do that in your own time. Okay, um, this is the same photo that we looked at earlier where the police officers are holding up a piece of paper. You can see them reading the notice out to protesters. So it's showing a section 12 or 14 notice, probably a section 14 notice in this case. Being read, it looks like they're on one of the bridges in London. Sections 12 and 14 of the Public Order Act 1986 allow conditions to be imposed on public processions, that's section 12, and public assemblies, that's section 14. The law states that conditions can be imposed as they appear necessary to prevent serious disorder, damage to property, disruption to the life of the community, or intimidation. Conditions can also be imposed if the noise people make may result in serious disruption to the activities of an organisation which are carried out near the protest, or where the noise may have a relevant impact on people in the area and the impact is significant, or the person is being intimidated intentionally. Um, so good idea not to plan any protest that's designed to intimidate individuals. Conditions can be set which restrict the place, the duration and the numbers of people allowed. So as an example, no assemblies of more than 20 people are permitted on Marble Arch on the 7th of October. So when something's already going on, the police may come along, take a look and say the condition that we're setting is that this, this assembly needs to be finished by 6.30, for instance. Um, in order to be convicted of an offence under section 12 or 14, you need to have been made aware of the section, or it must be shown that you ought to have known that the condition is in place and then you break it. For instance, a senior officer may make an announcement or sometimes visual displays or leaflets are used. So we are not trying to give the police a hard time or make their job harder than it has to be. We just don't do their job of informing rebels about section 12 or 14 for them. So if the police start handing out leaflets, you don't have to accept them or even pass them on to others. In fact, if you do hear about a section 12 or 14, don't make announcements about section 12 or 14. Don't spread news about section 12 or 14 on social media. And that applies to big group chats as well as public profiles like Facebook. Don't accept or hand out leaflets. This won't necessarily stop you from being arrested, but it may lead to charges being dropped at a later date. Methods like starting to chant loudly and blocking one's ears so you can't hear police announcements are not necessarily helpful. Sooner or later, police will arrest rebels, whether they're blocking their ears or not, and loud, aggressive chanting can easily aggravate a crowd. Proving that you couldn't hear a police announcement properly, for example, doesn't necessarily mean you can't be convicted of a Section 1214 offence. However, it may help support a technical defence made by your solicitor later if you're taken to court. And this is the bit where we don't really know how the new um, ought to have known wording is going to play out in court yet. If convicted, the maximum penalty is a fine of £2,500 or 51 weeks in prison or both. First time offenders would be likely to receive a fine of about two to 300 pounds or a conditional discharge. Okay, um, as you can see, somebody's been doing some chalks playing here. Um, so the offense that we'd typically see the person arrested for would be criminal damage. If you put super glue or spray chalk onto a public building, this is considered criminal damage. The damage doesn't have to be permanent. If you cause less than £5,000 worth of damage, then you'll be tried in the magistrate's court. If the damage is worth £5,000 or more, then you'll be tried in a Crown Court, which can mean higher sentences and costs, but also that you can speak to a jury. This doesn't apply to statues where the amount of damage does not affect whether your case will be heard in the Crown or Magistrates Court. So essentially, if you damage a statue or memorial, then you always um, have the right to elect to be tried in the Crown Court. If you want to minimise potential damage done through your action, you can use chalk spray rather than graffiti spray. 
and you can check that the surface you plan to spray on isn't of sensitive significance, like a war memorial, or a porous material that sucks up colour. So a safe material that isn't going to be porous is glass. A penalty to the penalty depends on whether the damage is more or less than £5,000. And this can be very difficult to predict in advance how much the damage will be assessed at. The absolute maximum sentence is 10 years imprisonment, but this is usually saved for millions of pounds worth of damage. And you can read more about criminal damage on informed dissent using the link that you can see on our slide here. Okay, you can, here we can see some people who are glued on across entrance um, turnstiles of a building. So these people are likely to have been arrested for the offence of aggravated trespass. So trespass is when you're on someone's property without their permission. This isn't a crime, this is a civil tort. Aggravated trespass is when you're trespassing with intent to prevent them going about their lawful business. For example, entering a drill site, causing them to stop work. This is a criminal offence. There's a separate criminal offence of trespassing on land with a vehicle, but we won't go into that here. It's on our website and we'll send a follow up. Ah, sorry. <laughs> if you want to avoid being arrested for this, you should leave property at once if you've been asked by security or the property owner to do so. If you've been charged with aggravated trespass in court, it can be useful to present evidence showing that you didn't prevent people from going about their lawful business. The maximum penalty for aggravated trespass is three months imprisonment or a fine of £2,500 or both. And first time offenders would be likely to get a fine of between £200 and £300. Cool. So moving on to the next common offence, um, it's this one. So typically people who kind of block roads in this kind of manner, um, where they block the whole road, um, people who do this are often arrested for an offence called obstruction of the highway or willful obstruction of the highway. Um, the police often use this power to remove like protesters who are standing outside buildings, um, sitting down like blockading entrances or roads um, and it's just really often commonly used in like public order situations. So the highway, um, as kind of you might infer from what I said just before this, it doesn't just stop at the road. So it, whilst it does include the road, it also includes like the pavement, um, grass, like grassy verges um, <laughs> and also um, private land that so used as a public thoroughfare and what that means is like some people have like private roads um, but they allow the public to use those roads um, so that also kind of does come under the definition of a highway in the law. Um, arrests are more likely when people use like lock-ons so that's when they like lock themselves to like other people um, using whatever uh, whatever method they, they choose to use um, or Arrests are also more common when people use like glue or stuff like that. Um, it's also worth noting that if you were to like, instead of blocking like the road here, like line up in front of this police van and like stop it from moving um, or like lock on to an object that the police are already trying to move um, or something like that, it's more likely that you'd be arrested for obstruction of a police officer. Um, and that could look worse on like your criminal record than obstruction of the highway. So that's just worth remembering. Um, the police typically do give a few warnings before arresting you for, um, for this, for obstruction of a highway. Um, and that's not to be like nice to you or anything like that. That's not to give you time to move or anything like that. It's so they can kind of add to that evidence. The offense is willful obstruction of a highway. So if they can show that they've asked you five or six times to leave and you haven't yet left, um, it kind of goes to show that you were there willfully um, and that they asked you to leave and you didn't leave. So that's, that adds on to that evidence. Um, it's also not a defence to say that the highway um, was already obstructed when you went and caused your obstruction. So if the police had like blocked off this whole road and then you went and joined like a protest that was there or something like that, um, it is not a defense to say the police had already blocked off the road or like a traffic warden had blocked off the road. Um, yeah, that was also brought in 
in July 2022 as well. If convicted, sorry, I keep forgetting to go to these slides, but if convicted, um, the maximum penalty um, is 51 weeks imprisonment or an unlimited fine or both. Um, yeah, we kind of talked about 51 weeks earlier as well for, I think it was section 14. Uh, that currently should be read as six months. Um, we won't go into the reasoning behind that here because um, it's quite complex, but um, I think, yeah, it is outlined at this link that's here. But yeah, at present, it's six months imprisonment or an unlimited fine or both um, because of technicalities. Uh, first time offenders are likely to receive a fine of about 200 to 300 pounds um, and also their other costs, which we'll talk about that about later. It's like court costs, um, prosecution costs, that kind of thing. Um, and I think that is it for obstruction of a highway. Moving on to this photo, we couldn't really find a photo because um, Googling the offence doesn't really show <laughs> too much. But this offence is public nuisance. This is one of the new offences brought in by the um, the police sentencing court, the police court sentencing, no, police crime sentencing and courts act, sorry, 2022. Um, I say it's a new offence. It was, it scrapped the old common offence, uh, common law offence, and it made a new statutory offence. Um, we won't really talk about what that means because it's not really relevant. Um, all we need to know is that it exists now. Um, so yeah, the offence is actually intentionally or recklessly causing a public nuisance. So what this means is if a person does something um, or they don't do something that they're required by law to do, um, and that act or omission of the act uh, creates a risk of or actually causes serious harm to the public, um, or a section of the public, or it prevents them from doing something that they would normally be able to do, uh, then that could all fall under this offence. It's quite broad, um, but it's also not massively broad. We've we've saw in the past like people holding up signs saying like walk on a road like ten years in prison or like use a megaphone, go to prison for ten years. Um, we'd kind of disagree with a lot of that. Um, it's unlikely that we'd see see those that type of thing falling under this. Um, and the reason behind that is because it has to involve serious harm. Um, serious harm has three kind of um, bits to it. So the first one is death, personal injury or disease. Whilst we think that's incredibly unlikely to happen at a protest, um, we still chuck it in for, um, for completeness. Loss of or damage to property. This is one that we think could come up a bit more. Um, and the last one is serious distress, serious annoyance, serious inconvenience or serious loss of amenity. Um, the last two are quite broad or the last one more broad. Um, but the point is it all has to be quite serious for it to be up, for it actually to be applied. Um, we'll see more about the uses of sexual uh, of um, public nuisance in the future, just because we've not seen a case for um, for this just yet in court. Um, but yeah, at present, the maximum sentence is ten years imprisonment or an unlimited fine or both. It's really difficult to say what first time offenders would receive as penalties um, because it's a new offence um, and there's no sentencing guidelines that have been written or published just yet, so we won't know. Um, how people will get sentenced in court. And if you want to read a bit more about it, there's a link there as well. Moving on to this one, um, again, kind of the best um, image that we could find um, is this is Parliament and this is people blocking access to Parliament. Um, and the offence here is obstruction of vehicular access to Parliament. It's not an offence in and of itself. It's part of another Another, of another section. Um, but yeah, there is an area around Parliament, which includes Parliament itself, uh, where there are certain things that you could do them in other areas, but you just can't do them in these areas here, um, or outlined at the link here. So the things include 
um, using amplified sound, putting up tents, placing down or using any sleeping equipment, which could be used to stay in the area overnight. It doesn't have to be used to stay in the area overnight. It's just that it can be used um, in the area. And that also applies overnight, sorry, two separate things. And the last thing that's just been added is the other prohibited act that's just been added is to obstruct vehicular access to the parliamentary estate. And that means blocking a vehicle from entering like parliament or, or leaving parliament. Um, so police officers, what they can do um, is basically tell you to stop doing the thing. And if you don't stop, um, then you can be arrested and you can be taken to courts um, and all that and all that stuff. The maximum sentence is an unlimited fine. Typically that's used um, reserved for more serious things, but yeah, we haven't really seen a case for this just yet in court. So we won't know how things are being sentenced. But yeah, there's more information at this link here. And yeah, next we will talk about arrest. Actually, just to correct something that we uh, earlier said, the maximum penalty for section 12 and 14, if you are kind of engaging in the protest and you're just a participant, is not um, 51 weeks imprisonment. It's actually just a fine of £2,500. If you were to be arrested for um, inciting other people to, to, to um, not comply with a section 12 or 14, or if you are arrested for and charged with being an organiser, um, of an assembly that is in breach of section 12 or 14, um, then, then the prison sentence applies. But at present, there's no prison sentence for just um, for being a participant in the, in the protest. So hopefully, yeah, that clarifies things.